Hello friends, I'm Kayla. Welcome to day three of 10 days of end of year slash beginning of year content. Before I get into wrap ups and stuff, I want to talk about things that I want to read. I want to talk about all of the 2024 reading plans that I have. I'm also going to do like a reading plans of stuff already on my TBR shelf and goals video, but this one is specifically about things I'm excited that are coming out in 2024. As always, I have between 40 and 50 things written down and I've split them into categories. The first one is sequels. This is probably the most amount of sequels I have ever had on my anticipated list. Like I'm excited to pick up continuations of series. Who am I? The first one of course is Miss Laden Parts Half Known, which is the Wayward Children book series number nine by Seanan McGuire. I read every single one of them. I love them all. It's like portal fantasy. This one takes us into a dinosaur world and it has established characters we already know about. So I think it'll be fun to follow. Then we've got Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett. I'm in love with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And in this one, we are still following Emily and Wendell as they are scholars and building out an encyclopedia for fairy lore. Um, in this one, they're creating a map of the fairy lands. And I just think it's gonna be great. Bumblebee is gonna continue to be sweet and charming. And we're gonna learn more things about their backstory and watch them fall in love without realizing it. Then I have Everyone on this Train is a Suspect by Benjamin Stevenson. Everyone in my family's killed someone was one of my favorite thrillery books of last year. And I don't know what this one is about, but I'm assuming we're following the same family and they're on like a train trip together and everyone is a suspect. I guess there's a murder. Next up I have an education in malice which exists in the dowry, what's it called? A dowry of blood uh, universe and we're following Carmilla and it's about dark obsession and rivalry. There's this professor and there's this like relationship happening. I don't fully know the plot but it's vampire-y and I'm gonna pick it up. Oh my god, these videos are so messy because I'm like, do you already know the plot of these or do you want me to tell you about them? Am I just supposed to tell you like what I'm excited about? You can look it up on your own. If you already know what it's about, maybe it'll bog down the video. I don't know. Finley Donovan rolls the dice. Finley Donovan book number four I will be reading. This might be the end of my experience with Finley Donovan, but we'll see how the story continues. I guess they're on a road trip to Vegas, I'm assuming, in this one. And we're following uh, Finley who has been caught up in crime, boss, murder for hire situations. She's a single mother. She's in a couple different potential relationships and we're just gonna follow her wacky situations as we judge all of her life choices. Then I have The Angel of Indian Lake by Stephen Graham Jones. Again, do not know the plot of this, but it's the third book in a series. And I love the first one, my heart is a chainsaw so much. I gave the second one a four star and we're following Jade and other people in this community uh, where they're are horrific things happening around uh, real life horrors and people taking over land that does not belong to them, but also like creature things. I also wrote down A Court of Wanderers, is that what it's called? Um, which is Silver Under Nightfall book number two. I hate the cover so much. I don't like, I don't love the first cover anyway, but this one I don't dig, but I am gonna pick it up maybe from the library. <laughs> Do I wanna own it? I'm not sure. Um, what's this about? It's about vampires. Basically our main character is part vampire, but he's also a bounty hunter for vampires. It's action packed and full of intrigue, but also warm and inviting because he gets welcomed into this uh, polyamorous relationship. And I'm excited to see where it goes in the sequel and what the plot actually is. Next up is book number five in the Singing Hill Cycle, which is called The Brides of High Hill. Our cleric Chi accompanies a young bride to her wedding to an aging lord at a crumbling estate. And the lord's mad young son wanders the grounds at night like a hanged ghost. All right. Another Shannon Maguire, of course, on my radar is titled Creatures, the third book in my favorite. It's not my favorite series because I didn't like the second book, but Middle Game is in my top five favorite books of all time. This series has to do with the alchemical arts and godhood. And in this one, people are fighting for control over the impossible city. Category number two, I do know what these books are about, but it's authors that I've enjoyed in the past coming out with new things. So I'm going to pick up those new things. The first one is Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin. In this one, we're following like a quirky main character, much like the last thing I read from her. Uh, she's true crime obsessed. And a serial dater and she's navigating her first serious relationship in here. Next up I have The Mystery Writer by Solari Gentile. I just recently read The Woman in the Library and it was so my vibe. 
so I put this one immediately on my TBR. And it follows a woman named Theodosia, abandoning her career, showing up at her brother's door with a suitcase and an unfinished novel, and she is dedicated to finishing it. But then as she's writing this story, something is happening in real life. Her mentor has been like murdered, her brother is a suspect, and she's writing the novel at the same time as solving a real life mystery, and I think they're gonna get entangled. Then The Woods All Black by Lee Mandela, this will be my third read from this author. It says it's equal parts historical horror, trans romance, and a blood-soaked revenge story. Something ugly is festering within the local congregation someone new arrives in town and it just shakes up the entire situation and what everybody has previously known then you like it darker by stephen king he has a short story collection coming out i will always pick up a stephen king short story collection i tend to prefer a lot of his short stories over his full-length novels i don't know what any of them are about then i don't care then i have icarus by kate ingram which is one of my only ya books on the list because i will always pick up a kate ingram there's just something so special about her writing style. And this one reimagines the tale of Icarus, as you would expect, as a star-crossed love story between a young art thief and the son of the man he's been stealing from. Next up, there's The Familiar by Lee Bardugo, which I've read the full synopsis of in a previous video, and for some reason I can't remember anything about it. It's a historical fantasy, and there is a woman after fortunes and she plunges into the world of seers and alchemists, holy men and hucksters, where the line between magic, science, and fraud is never certain. So I have that one pre-ordered, as well as the next one, Immortal Pleasures by V. Castro. This is about an ancient Aztec vampire roaming the modern world in search of vengeance. Moving into some lighter territory, I have Funny Story by Emily Henry, which is the one that there's like two people who just broke up, and then he ends up dating her childhood best friend. And so she starts dating her childhood best friend's ex. Or at first they're just supposed to be roommates, but then they're gonna fall in love in the story. Then I have One of You by Erin E. Adams. I really liked Jackal. And this one says it's horror mystery, but it also looks and sounds just kind of like general fiction. So I'm excited to figure out the tone of it. We're following a family, their mother unexpectedly dies, and now we're following uh, sisters who are overwhelmed by all of the relatives, friends, and church ladies coming into their lives. One of the women who inserts herself says she's like a friend of their mother's, but they've never heard of her and she becomes like obsessed with them. Next, I have One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. I just always pick up every Ruth Ware, so I can't imagine this year would be any different, so I have to consider it an anticipated one. Hate the cover. Love the lime green hate the rest of it. Although have I ever loved a Ruth Ware cover? I know this one has to do with a reality TV competition. So we have two characters. One is an aspiring actor. One is uh, doing postdoctoral research. They find themselves whisked off to paradise. I guess somebody dies or they start to die off one by one. It does say it's a comp for and then there were none, which is like, haven't we had enough of those? But I'm still anticipating. <laughs> um, the Last Murder at the End of the World sounds far more unique, and I'll be reading this, by Stuart Turton. It is set on an island where there's only like a hundred people who live there and they believe if they leave the island they will die. There's like this fog on the rest of the world that has killed everybody else off. But then someone dies on the island risking the safety of being protected by the fog. So they only have a certain amount of time before the fog rolls in to solve the mystery. Next up I wrote down Goddess of the River by Vishnavi Patel because I really loved Kaikei. Have I read the synopsis of this? Not sure. A powerful reimagining of the story of Ganja goddess of the river and her doomed mortal son. Ganja does not sound correct. Uh, maybe it's Ganga. Uh, she is cursed to become a mortal, bound to her human form until she fulfills the obligations of a curse. I also have a new Lucy Foley on my list, The Midnight Feast. I don't think I've actually read the synopsis, but I want to read the next Lucy Foley. The delicious twisty new locked room murder mystery. There's a luxury resort built on top of old secrets in an ancient wood. And we're following a whole bunch of perspectives as we normally do from Lucy Foley, the founder, the lover, the mystery guest, the kitchen help, the detective, all have an agenda, all have a past, but not everyone will survive. Sounds right up my alley. Ooh, another romance, The Rom Commerce by Catherine Center. I wasn't interested in her last one, but I did really like The Bodyguard and maybe if this is a true rom-com, it could work for me. We have Emma who longs to be a screenwriter and she's moving to LA for the opportunity for her dreams to come true. And she's working with like one of her heroes, but he is uh, perhaps very curmudgeon-y. And I'm excited to watch them fall in love. Of course, I have a Riley Sager on my list, Middle of the Night. This says it's a jaw-dropping thriller. A man must contend with the long ago disappearance of his childhood best friend and the dark secrets lurking just beyond the safe confines of his picture-perfect neighborhood. So that's standard returning to your childhood home as an adult story, 
but I'm sure it's gonna get weird. Next up, of course, one of my all-time favorites, Paul Tremblay has a new book coming out called Horror Movie. It's a chilling twist on the cursed film genre. It's partially set in the 90s where a bunch of people made a horror movie. It became a cult classic even though the people who made the movie have no idea how it got released to the public. And only one of the people in the movie is a surviving cast member and only he knows what really happened on the set. And the boundaries between reality and film past and present start to blur. Cannot wait for that one as well as the next one, I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a cover. This is just such a perfect cover. Set in the 80s in a small Texas town, a place where everyone knows everyone's business, and we're following a teenager who becomes cursed to kill for revenge. I don't know if it's solely his autobiography, but I do know we are partially at least reading his autobiography throughout the pages, so it's going to be interesting uh, how we're in this person's mind and what we learn. Then I have Like Mother Like Daughter by Kimberly McCray. And the synopsis says we're following a young woman who goes back to her hometown and she shows up at her childhood home and her mother is dead and now she needs to solve the crime. It sounds simple. It's not the synopsis that intrigues me the most. It's just that I've read from this author before and I've liked her stuff. So I will be picking it up. And now let's talk about the more risky list books on my TBR for the year that I've never read from the author, but I consider these anticipated just because the synopsis sounds intriguing. I have decided I'm forcing my fairy era into existence. So watch out for me reading Feybound by Sar Sara Al-Rafi. Uh, this author is someone I have on my TBR shelf, but I'm going to read this one instead of the one I already have. We're following elves who find themselves in the seductive, terrifying fairy court world. That's all I need to know. Next, I have Lore of the Wilds by Anna Lee Sobrana on my TBR. And this says it's about an enchanted library. There are two handsome fae and one human who brings them all together. I think this might be YA. I thought it was adult. It's tagged as both. I don't know. I am intrigued though, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, the Night of the Storm by Nishida Parekh is next on my list and this takes place during a hurricane and there's a bunch of people in a house because everyone in this family has been evacuated and then somebody as they're like together in this house dies and they have to solve the mystery. I also put down This Wretched Valley by Jenny Kiefer because it looks like it's a rock climbing story and that's always something that I want to read. Four ambitious climbers hike into the Kentucky wilderness. Seven months later three mangled bodies are found. Were their deaths simple accidents or the results of something more sinister? Oh I didn't even realize it was inspired by the Dyatlov Pass incident. Okay it says it's a survival bone chilling horror novel and I'd like to read it. Thank you. Next I have The Partner Plot by Christina Forrest. I only have a couple of romance on my list. This is an author that I've read her YA and then I do have a recent adult romance novel from her that I haven't yet read but I want to read this one because it has to do with fake dating. Uh, these two were former our former high school sweethearts and they get a second chance in this marriage of convenience plot. They both need to I think it's actually like both of them just recently broke up with someone or one of them and then went like viral on the internet in like an embarrassing breakup and now they want to save face by getting together which is also similar to the other romance that I have on my list. The Breakup Pact by Emma Ward. I know this is an author other people are really into. This will be my first time. And it says two best friends who haven't spoken in 10 years pretend to date after breakups with their respective exes go viral. I only have a couple romance novels on my list this year. Don't worry, I'm not gonna uh, try to force the romance era into existence. I've moved on. But I will be forcing my Finley Donovan comp titles moment into existence. So I want some wacky thriller type stuff and there's a couple on my radar. One is The Murder After the Night Before by Katie Brent which follows a woman whose best friend was murdered. Um, she wakes up with like this terrible hangover and they were out celebrating and now she has to figure out what happened to her friend. Another one that sounds wacky is The Best Way to Bury Your Husband by Alexia Casal and this is a uh, woman who accidentally, well, I don't know if it's an accident. She's like, has a skillet in her hand. She kills her husband. And then it says, Sally isn't the only woman in town pushed to her breaking point. When coincidence brings four strangers together, a surprising solidarity is formed. So I don't know if that means they all killed somebody or she's going to encourage other people to kill their husbands as well, but I'm gonna read it. Next, I put Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan on my list. This is more of a fun horror book, so we'll see how it goes. But it just sounds 
so fun. It's set in the 90s and there's a woman who owns a funeral parlor and then one day one of the people who dies comes back to life and she's like oh my god the famous small town vampire that we all know about must be back and now she has to work together to get this like group of women I think together to kill the vampires. I also put Every Time I Go on Vacation Someone Dies on my list by Katherine Mack. This says 10 days, eight suspects, six cities, five authors, three bodies, one trip to die for. So we have a best-selling author who is headed on a vacation trip and she has written in her book about like a real life person in her life. It's inspired by somebody real. And then somebody attempts to kill him or does kill him. And then she has to solve like the real life mystery of that while also writing a book. Another goofy sounding one that I really want to read is called, stay with me, how to Become the Dark Lord and Die Trying by Django Wexler. It says a young woman stuck in a time loop tires of defending humanity from the Dark Lord and decides to become the Dark Lord herself. This could either be like one of the greatest books or one of the worst books that I've ever decided to read, but I will be reading it. I also have this one where the cover is just horrifying called Supplication by Naur Abinacle on my list. And it says it's a hallucinatory literary horror set deeply in the sub in the consciousness of a woman exploring a changed and frightening world it says our protagonist arises out of a basement um with a man looming over her someone has a knife we follow her she emerges from captivity into this nightmare landscape and i have no idea what the actual plot is but it sounds well it doesn't need to be a plot like when the cover looks like this do you really expect a plot anyway Moving on to The Honey Witch because I want to read more cozy, fun, light things, and this sounds perfect. Sydney J. Shields. This is a queer novel about a woman who has been cursed by something, like a witch put a curse on her. And then another woman arrives to like the small town of the island or wherever she lives, and she doesn't believe in magic. And so our main character takes it upon herself to like prove that magic is real based on her own cursed situation and they fall in love. Uh, I also have Rake's Fall on my list by Bara Chandrascara. When I review these books I will know how to pronounce these authors names I promise and this one is like the weirdest synopsis um, but it says it's a standalone science fiction epic about two souls bound together from here until the ends of time and it just sounds very weird and confusing. Um, it says these two people met after the war, before the peace. They found each other in a torn up nation. And it's just all about their souls and how they constantly like are pulled back together. It's about reincarnation. I don't really know what to expect, but I'm going to read it. Then I have a short story collection, I think, called Craft Stories I Wrote for the Devil by Ananda Lima. And this follows a woman who after a Halloween party in 1999, uh, she sleeps with the devil. And this is just a series of stories that she writes for the devil. I guess they con they are constantly coming back into contact with each other and she is telling him all of these tales. I don't know why, but I feel like I have to read it. Then A Botanical Daughter by Noah Medlock is a queer fantasy horror debut a captivating tale of two Victorian gentlemen hiding their relationship away in a botanical garden who embark on a Frankenstein style Frankenstein style experiment with unexpected consequences. So I think the one on the cover is um, this woman who they create by accident and now they have to like care for her or who knows if she's bad or good. It looks like it's going to be light and sweet but I don't know. Then this one is called We Ate the Dark by Mallory Pearson and it says four women investigating the haunted murder, the haunting murder of their friend discover more than they ever imagined in a terrifying novel about good and evil, love and death and the space in between. Five years ago one girl in this friend group disappeared and now a bunch of these women are coming together to find out what really happened and all of their secrets are going to be revealed throughout the novel. So that's my list for now. It is a little bit abridged. I mean these are my most anticipated. They're the ones that I've mostly pre-ordered. I do have a whole bunch more on my radar. There are so many books coming out and obviously I read like 270 books a year so I will get to so many more than I listed and here's just a couple extra ones that if you were wondering uh if you were looking for more to be interested by or if you were wondering is this on my radar it is here is some more but I think I covered the most important ones the ones that I will almost definitely be reading I don't know maybe I need to do a reaction at the end of the year like I used to to see which ones I actually read of my most anticipated so I will see you uh not tomorrow but 
the day after with my least favorite books of the year. I'll see you then. Bye.